The city of Oakland is currently debating the possibility of terminating a contract it has with the investment bank Goldman Sachs. The deal in question is called an interest rate swap and is a particular type of arrangement that was supposed to save the city money, but instead has resulted in Oakland taxpayers making annual payments of around $4 million to the banking giant. The arrangement dates back to 1997, when city officials planned to issue $187 million in bonds, underwritten by Goldman Sachs, to make payments toward the police and fire pension fund. These bonds were issued to refund a previous set of bonds issued 10 years prior. By refinancing the older fixed interest rate bonds with variable rate bonds, Oakland was able to save considerable money. At the same time though, the city ran the risk that the variable interest rates could climb much higher than the previous fixed rates, depending on economic conditions. This interest rate swap deal was intended to create a synthetic fixed rate for the city to pay, still lower than the initial fixed rate on the original bonds the new ones would refund. In this case, the new rate was set at 5.6%. Goldman Sachs sells interest rate swap products to governments such as the city of Oakland by promising to protect the entity against the unpredictability of interest rates and to also likely reduce the overall long-term cost of borrowing money. It was supposed to be a win-win game. Oakland believed the agreement would protect taxpayers from potential rises in interest rates. The problem, however, is that interest rates have only briefly exceeded 5.6% in the subsequent 15 years, and for most of that time, they've been far lower. The supposition was that since it had been going up at that point, that Oakland would be doing very, very well, and in fact, the first couple of years it looked actually pretty good. Then it crashes, the U.S. government bails out these banks, and the Federal Reserve artificially depresses the rate of interest. So the rate of interest is is basically close to zero. Goldman Sachs is paying nothing on this. Yet Oakland is still paying 5.6% interest to Goldman Sachs. Compounding the harm, there has been no economic recovery in spite of the Fed's low interest rate. The ongoing economic recession means that Oakland has far fewer tax dollars at precisely the moment when its interest rate swap with Goldman Sachs is costing it millions per year. So anytime when interest drops, then the city of Oakland we still have to pay for the fixed amount of payments on Interswap, but they would receive this and this and this from Goldman Sachs on uh, 14 rate payments. The 5.6% rate of this specific swap is higher than the average fixed rate in such a deal, normally hovering around 4 to 5%. This was in exchange for two upfront payments made by Goldman Sachs to the city totaling $15 million. This trade-off may have seemed like a good idea for a city needing short-term capital injection, but in the long run, over the 24-year life of the rate swap, the higher interest rate is proving costly. The city has already made $26 million in interest payments to Goldman Sachs. While the city paid off the bond in 2005, according to the agreement, the interest payments must continue until the year 2021. The bonds issued by the Ocarin was supposed to mature in 2005. But they signed an interest rate contract that would last until 2020. And uh, this, from hedging you know, purposes, this is not supposed to be done. Because the way we do it for hedging, that we will sign a, an interest contract with the same maturity as the bonds, so that you use the interest swap to cover the bonds. So for the coming few years, the city might still have to make payments to Goldman Sachs because you know, interest won't go back up to 5.667% anytime soon. Maybe, you know, I'm not sure, three, four, five years after could be, but not for the near future. If interest rates stay as low as they are, Oakland could be on the hook for an additional $20 million. This deal is by no means specific to Oakland. In fact, hundreds of municipalities and public agencies around the U.S. have similar deals with Goldman Sachs and other such banks. This has become big business. As Bloomberg News reported, banks have made over $20 billion on such deals in the past five years, coming out of the budgets of stressed municipalities. Just in the San Francisco Bay Area, for example, there are numerous instances of rate swaps backfiring on cash-strapped public institutions. The San Francisco International Airport signed an agreement with Goldman Sachs in 2007 with the deal now having a negative value to the airport of around $22 million.
Goldman Sachs will see annual payments in the millions from the airport for the foreseeable future. Borrowers are free to leave the swap agreements at any time, but would have to pay a penalty equaling the approximate market value of the remaining payments. Some borrowers have been willing to pay, as it seems a better option than continuing with their rate swaps. The Bay Area Toll Authority, for instance, inundated with large payments to its swap partner, AMBAC Financial Group, decided to pay $105 million to end its $1.1 billion worth of rate swaps. Bloomberg News uncovered that $4 billion was transferred to Wall Street in early termination penalties in the period between 2008 and its report in November 2010. Under Oakland's current agreement with Goldman Sachs, the city's potential penalty if it decided to terminate was last calculated at around $16 million, money the city can hardly spare in a time of austerity. Whether the city has the money to make that kind of settlement is a question. All right. Uh, so, you know, from economic perspective, this is all we can do, all a city can do, uh, except the city can exercise some kind of political muscles to get out of the contract. But those are political decisions, not economic decisions. It is in this context in which the coalition to stop Goldman Sachs is formed. Made up of local community groups, clergy, labor unions, and offshoots of the Occupy movement, the coalition is demanding Goldman Sachs let the city out of the agreement without penalty. Our demand on this money is to get it back into the city and, and that it need to be put toward the most disadvantaged sectors of our community. We want Oakland to end this relationship, end the swap. We want them to pressure uh, Goldman Sachs not to force them to pay a penalty on ending the swap and also to return all the money that they took from Oakland since 2005. In addition to the coalition, others such as Reverend Daniel Buford of Allen Temple Baptist Church have been vocal critics of the rate swap and argue for its termination. Let me contextualize this a little bit. Goldman Sachs just settled a lawsuit that was initiated by the SEC for $550 million. We're not talking about <laughs> a figure anywhere near that. We're talking about a figure that actually uh, closely approximates the CEO, uh, Lloyd Blankfin's annual salary is over $40 million. Some observers, however, have said that while taxpayers may not like the deals, they are perfectly legal. Both sides took a bet, and the bank simply won. You're right that it's a bet, right? There's a bet that the city of Oakland lost, but the key point is that the reason Oakland and other cities lost is because of the financial meltdown and who was one of the main players causing that was Goldman Sachs. And the same people who suffer from this crisis, the foreclosure rates in Oakland are through the roof, especially in poor neighborhoods. And it's those poor neighborhoods who are now suffering and their tax money going towards Goldman Sachs. When banks crash the economy, you come to us and you ask us to give back. You ask us for furlough day, unpaid furlough days. You ask us to pay more for our pensions, more for our health care. We have contracts too, but our contract seems to be able to be open whenever they want. So their contract that, we, that Oakland has with Goldman Sachs is no more sacred and no more important than the contract that the city has with the workers and with the public. So if we're all sharing in the sacrifice to keep Oakland running, they have a responsibility as well. Goldman Sachs was contacted for comment on this story, but said no one in their San Francisco office was available for an interview. Questions were submitted via email to their New York office, but no response was returned. The coalition to stop Goldman Sachs took its arguments to the Oakland City Council, where the reception was much warmer than expected. Several council members have actively spoken out against the rate swap deal, calling for its end, such as council member Rebecca Kaplan. Some city officials, however, have taken a more reserved stance on the swap. While advising the best course of action would be a negotiated termination, Assistant City Administrator Scott Johnson has been adamant that the deal has ultimately saved Oakland money. While Mr. Johnson said he was not available for an interview, he did respond to questions briefly by email, in which he stated that the swap was performing as it was designed to do, 
providing debt service savings compared to the fixed rate bonds issued in 1988. Therefore, the city does not consider a loss on these deals. But in a May 8th meeting of the City Council's Finance Committee, council members didn't seem to look favorably upon the presentations made by Mr. Johnson and other city officials to this effect. Some openly stated that Oakland should just stop paying, agreeing with the arguments of coalition members present at the meeting. You know, sometimes you can't get the banks to pay attention until you stop paying them. You know, <laughs> we all know that Golden Sachs was criminal. We all know, and there's nobody up here who doesn't want to get out of this. There's no one here who doesn't want to get out of this bond. While the city of Oakland still has yet to decide which course it will take in its dealings with Goldman Sachs, it seems the continuation of this agreement is entirely uncertain. For its part, the coalition to stop Goldman Sachs hopes its efforts will inspire residents of other affected areas to organize as they have, as interest rate swaps are not just a Bay Area issue. And what we're talking about with Goldman Sachs and, and putting pressure on the city, you can change a, a power relationship here between the city of Oakland and a major banking institution. I would say that Oakland could be uh, somewhat of a model for uh, people standing up and focusing on bad uh, deals that municipalities have gotten into without necessarily the, uh, the consent of those who are governed. And I think that if we can do it here in, in Oakland, um, I think that it can be done other places. To me, it's about building a mass political movement that is questioning the economic system that we have and starting to envision alternatives.